I was born in uh, Roseland, Illinois, which is now a suburb of Chicago. I was pretty much raised in Indiana. Uh, that's where I attended grade school and junior high. I had been bullied in, in grade school and in high school quite a lot. I was, I'm not the, the hero, you know, that you see in the books. I was pushed around a lot when I was in grade school, high school, uh, had a bad self-image. And I wanted to test myself. I had come to that point in my, my growth that I, I needed to do something to um, figure out who I was. So I volunteered for Vietnam. Alan Lynch enlisted in the Army in 1964. Two years later, he volunteered to go to Vietnam. By December of 1967, Lynch was serving as radio telephone operator with the 12th Cavalry in Binh Dinh Province. We had been in the, in the field for quite a long time, had been chasing the, the North Vietnamese and the, the end of the BC quite a lot during November, December, and uh, a lot of firefights, a lot of contact. So they, they pulled us out to uh, stand down, which was, that's where you get your showers and you get your weapons fixed and all of that kind of thing. And so we had, uh, a bunch of us had gone to town and got back to, to base and walked into a briefing. It seems that A Company was sucked into an ambush and was screaming for help and, and so on. And uh, we were to air assault in the next day, zero dark 30, and relieve them. And so we air assaulted into uh, some village and uh, we were getting ready to move around the perimeter to uh, go in and hit A Company or hit where A Company was from the flank. And uh, it seems that A Company was the bait. The, the Vietnamese were dug in, they were in spider holes, they were in hooches, they were in trees, they were everywhere. And what they did is they let us, they let us move in and uh, we walked into an ambush. One of our point men uh, came, tried to get back. Uh, the other, his partner was shot in both legs, uh, in the shins. And uh, so he came back and uh, got shot halfway out. I think he got shot in the shoulder. So I went out and got him and, and brought him back to our, to our lines. And he told me that his partner was laying out there and he couldn't move because his legs were gone. And they, were, they were shattered pretty good. And he's, you know, so I dropped my radio, which I shouldn't have done. Uh, I asked my LT if I could go get him. I thought I'd just run out, pick him up, and bring him home. And uh, as it happened, I went out there and got him, and we both got pinned down. And then uh, Casares uh, started to come over, I think, to help out. And uh, about halfway over, he got shot. So I went out and I got him. And uh, there was such intense fire that I, there was only one place to go, and it was back to where we were. Unable to return to friendly lines, Lynch remained on the battlefield to aid his wounded comrades. He secured a nearby trench by killing two enemy soldiers at point-blank range. With the trench cleared, he returned through heavy enemy fire to carry the wounded men to safety. We stayed for a long time. They called in artillery and jet strikes on us. Uh, jets came so close over us so we could count the rivets on there on the, uh, in the fuselage. They, they actually came over, when they came over, they dropped an napalm right on top. They actually, we watched the napalm being let go, and it, it spun. You know, had I been in school, I would have known that speed, distance, and all of that. We were not gonna get hurt, but at that time, it was pretty scary. Alone, Lynch defended his isolated position for two hours against the advancing enemy until he was able to carry the wounded across an exposed area to a more secure position. He then located a counterattacking friendly force to assist in directing the attack and evacuating the wounded. I got back to my unit. They, they pulled us all out when we, when we were finally rescued. They pulled us all out of the field. And, you know, the wounded guys went into one tent and got their wounds taken care of, and I got a, into another tent and got a little white pill, and then I had um, several um, liquid refreshments uh, for a couple of days, and then I ended up back with my unit who was standing down on another LZ, and I came back and they told me they had put me in for the Medal of Honor. Then it got lost. Never heard anything about it before, you know, and the day before I got married, I was notified I was going to get the Medal of Honor. I had a police, I, I have a problem with my foot when I drive. It seems to press down on the gas too much. And 
So I was coming home and I was followed by a police officer for like the last couple of miles. I turned, he turned, oh crime money, I'm gonna you know, get a ticket and he pull into my driveway and he pulls in right behind me. And I get out, geez officer, I'm sorry, what did I do? He says, is your name Alan Lynch? I said, yes. He says, Are you, is your social security number this? I said, yes. He says, call this number. And I'm like, what did I do? And he says, it's a good thing. Just, I'll see you, goodbye, have a nice day, call that number. So I went into the house, I called the number and I got some colonel. Alan Lynch, the same thing. He says, well, I have the great honor to tell you that you're going to be getting, receiving the Congressional Medal of Honor from President Nixon on, I think it was Armed Forces Day, 19, uh, 1970. There were 12 of us that received the medal that day by, by President Nixon. I was so blown away when they put that medal around my neck. And I, I never realized the impact that it would have on my life. This is a representation of the very best that America has to offer. We are, we are given the, the tremendous honor and privilege of representing the thousands upon thousands of men and women who have served our country, who did wonderful, marvelous, heroic things and never got recognized. And we carry this for them. Uh, it's not me, uh, it's not what I did, it's, it's what they did that wasn't recognized, and I think that's, uh, it's a tremendous responsibility, it's a tremendous honor to do this.